It's Friday, December 17th, 2021 at 1.33 p.m. here locally in downtown Seattle. This is the One Hair Eighth Project's diary cast number 18, entitled Into the Mystic. The wheel has turned. I've traveled from the natural beauty of Oregon's coastline into the spiraling waveform of spiritual transformation and through the awaiting portal into the next which is the man-made beauty of a high-rise in downtown Seattle. Now, it has been quite the process (laughs) to complete this transformation, yet in the accomplishment, I found that I have been invited deeper into the mystic. Smell the sea and feel the sky. Let your soul and spirit fly into the mystic. And where that foghorn blows, I will be coming home. This diary cast is unique in that half of the week I was in one location, again, Southern Oregon. And the other half, I was in the concrete jungle of where I am now, downtown Seattle proper. There couldn't be two more opposite expressions of physical form in this reality. So let me start with where I came from, a place called Percy Suites. What you're seeing now is the place that I stayed right on the 101 in a little town called Langloy, Oregon. To get to Seattle, I had to take a bus two planes, and a taxi. And due to coastal winds playing havoc with the weather, uh, which caused delays on both of my flights and took 17 hours to go from Oregon to Washington, which is a mere seven and a half hour road trip if one chooses to drive. I felt it was gonna be challenging before it even began, just simply because to get there, it was an interesting and unique ordeal and once you're in Langloy, you're, you're in Langloy. <laughs> there are no Ubers. There are no taxis. There are no shops other than the local market about a half a mile down the road. And you have to come to terms with the fact that if you choose to remain, you are in a kind of cocooned environment. So I expected the challenge, and I went into the ordeal with a high level of temperance, looking at the strong possibility of what was to come as a mixture of both negative and positive experiences. So I chose to use it as an opportunity to hone and tune my skills, taking me from any points of chaos back to calm when needed. Sure enough, The process was filled with contrast, too many minute details to outline here. But each time I felt my emotions teeter away from, let's say my personal median point, towards anything less desirable, I took a few deep breaths and tuned out from those things where the conflict was sprouting from and then found my balance once again. It was a situation that required constant recalibration, some initially uncomfortable, others bringing lessons and synchronicities with that contrast. At each turn, I felt as if my role was to, let's say, go with the flow, and in the doing, accept what I couldn't change, knowing there was a higher plan in play that may or may not be revealed to me. In some cases, it was, but I've got to admit that I still can't figure out what exactly I got out of being instructed to run (laughs) from United's Gate number... E5 to uh, gate F13 in San Francisco's International Airport to catch my connecting flight that was being held in wait just for me, or so I was told. So I did. I ran (laughs) with a 30-pound pack on my back and a mask restricting my ability to adequately refresh my air supply. Now, just before I got to that departure gate, at approximately F11, a young boy darts out from a nearby food cart right in front of me, 
And I had so much momentum behind me in my movements that even though I slowed down my legs, that backpack was still in flight. And I went diving off as if on a high board, landing flat on my front in a belly flop, still in motion. Two strangers were kind enough to help me up. And then I ran again. When I finally arrived at my gate, the attendant said he was so sorry, but that they had just given my seat away two minutes prior, and the plane was at the gate, locked in place, loaded and ready to go. The next flight I was rebooked on was about six hours later, so I filled that time thwarting the universe's attempts to totter my emotional seesaw with meditation and deep breathing. At that point, my goal was just to stay awake and to stay healthy until that next flight arrived, which wasn't until about 11.30 that evening. On the flip side, I had such a moving experience while in the waiting area of the North Bend Regional Airport in Coos Bay, Oregon for my first flight that all of the rest of these challenging teeterings along the dark side offered a kind of perfect counterweight to the fullness of the experience. I was in the waiting area outside gate one, just passing time for our already long delayed flight to call boarding. The book I was reading was entitled Love in the Forest, and there was a gentleman sitting next to me who it was clear was not in a good way. His head was down, He was crying quietly, and under his breath, I could hear him murmuring. I just couldn't tell what it was he was saying. Eventually, he dropped his ticket, and I went over to pick it up for him. And in the process of attempting to hand it to him, he didn't take it. And then he said, I'm legally blind. Could you put it in my hand? So I did. We exchanged a few words, and I let him know if there was anything I could do to help him out. I was right there next to him. Returned to my seat and my book. As I began reading on page 84, I got to a point where the text read, quoting Bible scriptures, continually repeating the same passages. And that's exactly what the gentleman next to me was doing. As I said, I couldn't tell what it was he was saying, but he was repeating it over and over and over and over. Then, just as the word holy passed my thought trail, the word holy came out of his mouth. It was like synchronized swimming in perfect alignment. Then I stopped reading for a moment and just listened. And what I realized was that he was saying, the Hail Mary prayer. To me, this had been a beautiful synchronicity culminating around the word holy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. I stopped reading for a moment, realizing there was something being shared with me and me alone this deep connection the gentleman next to me had with his faith and I with mine. Though different, there were many parallels. In my world, synchronicities, cool coincidences, and moments of pure spiritual connection ebb and flow in and out of my life, especially at times when I'm supposed to be paying closer attention. So I did. I closed my eyes. I attempted to join my energy with his and allow our pooling of frequential resources to further enhance whatever this goal was he was attempting with his Hail Mary prayer. Later on, I heard him saying to one of the attendants that his mother was dying, and he was on his way to reach her in hopes to do so before the moment of passing. Now it all made sense. Death and rebirth. For him, it was literal. For me, it was figurative. I was moving from one unique type of natural environment into another that was man-made, and I was about to be reborn. 
The synchronicities continued exponentially throughout this 17-hour journey. As the taxi pulled up to the Airbnb where I was staying for the first few days of my time here in Seattle, the driver and I struck up a conversation where he revealed personal things going on in his life that too paralleled what was going on in my own. For those first few days in the Airbnb, this connection with the higher greatness of things continued. When I finally settled into my house sitting gig in a high rise in downtown Seattle, just about a mile from the Airbnb where I began my journey, the most bizarre thing happened. It came in twos. First, upon my arrival, I noticed right away a book that was in a metal shelf along the ledge of the window. The reason I noticed it was because I had just recorded an audio on the Sunday before my departure, 12-12-21, as I left on (laughs) 12-13, got early in the morning. (laughs) And the title of the book was called The Hidden Life of Trees. Well, that blends perfectly into what I discussed in an audio that I uploaded to our 1HP SoundCloud account that was entitled, Calibrate the Counterweight. I'm going to insert here the short passage where I talked about the hidden life of trees, what they feel and how they communicate. I've gone out of my way to enhance, develop, refine, experiment so that I could even discover new energies that exist in the world and ways of being. So I kind of figured out how to tune in to, I don't know what to say other than frequency, tune in to a particular area. And I feel a lot of it has to do with pure nature, but there's consciousness there. And I feel that way because when I walk in some of these areas, It's as if nature is talking to me. I feel it flowing through me in the same way that you might feel a vibration in the air if there was like a volcano under your feet or if there was excessive winds and they were rustling through trees and you may feel protected by all the trees, but yet you're still feeling that hum and there is this hum. And so I feel as if the trees are primarily the trees because they've, you know, they've been here forever. They're trying to tell their tales of experience, of history, of lineage to me. If you've ever done any research on trees, and I recommend that you look into Judy Dench because she's a real tree aficionado. She's done a few um, films, short films on it, and I think there's even one on YouTube, where you learn that trees communicate through the root system to other trees. So it's underground, but there's this communication that has been measured, that has been scientifically studied. And a tree may appear to us on its surface to be dead, but it won't be dead completely until it has released all of its history out into the root system to communicate and share its knowledge with the entire system that is around it. And once it has completed that process, it now will fall over. That's how you know a tree is truly dead. It falls on its own. Now, the second synchronicity was really pretty bizarre. It started with me leaving the place where I'm staying, looking for supplies, and I came to a drugstore, walked in, picked up the few items I wanted, and began to leave. I stopped and had a quick conversation with the security guard because the two of us had a humorous exchange when I first arrived that's not that interesting to you, the listener, but had to do with him 
finding humor in the fact that I was struggling to get my mask on before I entered the store. After I exchanged those words with him, I thought to myself, you know, I feel like I'm not alone here. I had this kind of visceral shift around my body, which, you know, people will call, say, your energy field. And I thought, that's really weird. I wonder what that is. So inside my head, of course, I said, if I'm not alone, find a way to let me know. And as I do these kinds of things, I always just think them or say them or do them and move on because I know that if there's an answer to come, it'll come. I don't keep festering on it or thinking about it anymore. So I took a few steps forward and there was a couple in front of me that I thought might be in line. So I tried to get around them, but it wasn't that easy. So I asked them if they were in line and they said, no, they weren't. But then they engaged me in the debate that was taking place between them. These were two apparently married couples, they were at least partners, arguing about something silly regarding the labeling on this particular item that they were looking to purchase. I would share more details, but it's personal for them. And as they were arguing, there was a tall box filled with full rolls of wrapping paper. You know the drill. I see them every Christmas, as we all do. It was standing flush against the checkout counter. No one anywhere within 10 feet, and that would have been me and this couple. And the security guard was a good 20 feet away. Then out of the blue, it just falls over. And the full rolls come tumbling out until one of them touches the end of my foot. It stops the couple in mid-sentence and they look up at me and I'm just laughing because I know that that's not possible. And I turned around and I looked at the security guard and I said, did you see that? Because he had the perfect view standing in the background looking forward into the store. And he shakes his head and he's just smiling. And I said, has it ever done that before? And he said, not once. (laughs) So to me, I felt like, well, there's my answer. Yes, I'm not alone. And boy, did they find an obvious way to let me know. So when things like that occur that are so anomalous, it is virtually impossible for it to occur naturally. I don't waste any time wondering about, could it possibly be? I just have a knowing that it was. (laughs) So I checked out, got my stuff, came back here. Since that day, I have been blessed with a myriad of beautiful feelings here. And then one final note. The young girl whose apartment I'm in, house sitting for her lovely cat named Rory, She sent me a text saying how grateful she was that she had an energy worker in her home. She was kind enough to share with me that she has a condition that's treatable, but not curable. And I can tell from the conversations we've had that she is like me in that she believes in the more of things. And I took what she said seriously. And I realized that as long as I'm here, What I'm going to do is spend time merging and blending my energy with everything that's here, everything that's in the physical world and the non-physical world. And since I will be here for just under two months, I'll have plenty of time to leave my signature here. And in the process, hopefully offer her through this healing energy the opportunity to have a bit more comfortable of a life once she returns. I'm not going to say anything to her about it. I'm not going to make a big deal about it. I'm just going to find time every day to perform energy work in this home environment of hers. And my guess is that if there's any change noteworthy, that she will find a way to let me know. So here I am, stepping into the mystic, thrilled that I have the opportunity to now balance 
two different dichotomies in one short season of my life. And for this week, I will leave it there. We were born before the wind Also younger than the sun Yeah, the bonnie boat was one As we sail into the mystic 